Hey folks, so after my last video about the pressure reducing valve and the PRV, I had a couple of different questions come across about you know, how does it work and what causes them to go bad. If you stay tuned, I'll go into a little bit of an in-depth review on how they work and what causes them to go bad for you. Stick around. Okay, folks, just bear with me a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a drawing. This is actually a pressure reducing valve. I'm going to put one here on the whiteboard. So, so at the bottom chamber. Put up the middle here. The upper chamber. And then we've got the dome here on the top with the Adjusting, adjusting screw, adjusting bolt at the top. Okay, so inside of this this valve, essentially there's a chamber on the bottom that allows the water to come in and gets routed to an area. There's a floor here. And up in the top here, there's a large spring and we say that this bolt kind of goes through here as well. Then there's a diaphragm here. I'm gonna color it in. And then this outlet here is our valve. So, so let's just say we're gonna use blue for, blue for the water. So our water comes in this direction and leaves this direction. So essentially, the pressure reducing valve takes the high pressure water from your street, let's just, let's just say 150 PSI, and reduces it to a common household level between 50 and 65 PSI. And the way that it does that is through this mechanism. So the water comes in here as high pressure water. It goes through this section of the valve and out the other side into your house. So this pipe going into your house, if there's no if there's no um, faucets open, that water um, backs up. It builds back into this system. It essentially floods this chamber and pushes this diaphragm up. So high pressure in, pressure coming back, depending on what we have this set at between 50 and 65 PSI, it will shut off, it will cause the bottom floor here to come up and narrow this section. Now, in, uh, inadvertently lowering the pressure. So as it does this, this diaphragm moves up. You see that it get a bulge up inside of here. Water fills it up, and now we have a narrow pathway to come through, restricting the pressure. So, that way, the next time that you open up your faucet, you get the water coming out. Now the pressure is reducing, comes back through. This diaphragm comes back down. Down underneath here. And it causes this piece to come down to the bottom and open up the floodgates again. So that is, in essence, how this pressure reducing valve works. Now I'm gonna show you, or talk to you a little bit about how they actually will fail. Okay, so, so this valve, we have water coming in this section, going out this section. So I don't know if I'll be able to show you a good picture of this one. Actually, yeah, you can see it really good. So you can see here the, the, the chamber inside, that's how the water comes in, and then how it comes back through here. I'm, I'm sorry, um, yeah, back through here. So you can see here, the inside, you can kind of see that that bushing inside, how it gets that is a piece that gets pushed down, restricts the water flow, comes back up to let it to let the water um, flow freely. But in essence, restricting pressure and increasing pressure. So essentially how that works. So the why why they fail. You'll have times you'll see in the news where a water main might break underneath the road, um, somebody's yard, whatever. 
as that water main breaks, there's a hole in the water, the water's shooting out into the ground, you're causing all mud and debris and rocks and all. So the city shuts off that water, pipe coming through, they come in, they fix that, that portion of the pipe and fill it back in with gravel and with dirt, good to go. But not for everybody, because as that open pipe was exposed um, for the water going through it, all that debris had to go somewhere at the time and it gets pushed into that system. So inside of your house, that water comes in to our, your pressure reducing valve and into, into other areas. So this is kind of like our, our first or second line of defense. It goes through your check valve at the street, comes into your pressure reducing valve. So inside of this valve, there are screens. You can see here the screens. So if, if a lot of sediment comes in, essentially it will restrict the movement of that inner valve up and down and cause it to lock open or closed. If it locks open, all the high pressure from the outside comes in and rushing into your house. You'll know from, from a couple different key indicators. You'll have your toilets constantly running. It'll sound like you've flushed it and it's trying to fill again. It's always filling um, because that, that valve inside of your toilet isn't made for that kind of pressure and it keeps shooting it through there. It's got to let it out. The other thing would be potentially the pressure relief valve on your hot water heater. So that valve might start leaking into your garage, your basement, wherever your hot water heater is located. That'll be another indicator. The worst type of indicator is your braided lines for your sinks um, in your kitchen and in your bathroom and in your, on your toilet too, but the toilet probably would be safer. Um, that braided line has a rubber hose inside of it. And you can imagine as it gets a lot of pressure in it, it's like a balloon inside. It gets bigger and bigger and expands. Eventually it'll pop right through that braided section there and bust and all the water comes shooting out into your house, into your bathroom, your kitchen, flooding your floors. Worst type of water damage that I've seen so far. So that is one way that they fail. They fail open. So they can also fail closed where it restricts all the water coming into your house and you have no water pressure. Ideally, if it's going to fail, that's probably the best way for it to fail because that way you don't have you know, any mess to clean up from it. You just need to get your valve replaced and ensure that you don't have anything else coming through. One thing I'll say is if you have a valve that is replaced, I would probably recommend flushing your hot water heaters at the same time because if sediment caused this valve to go bad, it could also cause the sediment to, to settle in the, hot, the bottom of your hot water heater and cause uh, the popping noises restricting water flow and pressure issues. So that's all of this in a nutshell. If you have questions about the PRV, the pressure reducing valve, feel free to shoot me a note. Um, I'd be glad to speak with you about it, kind of walk through a scenario with you. Um, be glad to answer any questions. Anyway, you guys stay safe and we'll see you again soon. Have a good evening.